Hi, it's Bridget. Hey, welcome. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, our special guest from the afterlife is Mr. Stephen Hawking. Now, what an interesting person to connect with from the afterlife. Now, I did try to, I did, I did a full on recording about a week or so ago with Stephen and we had a great talk for like 20 minutes and it was awesome, but somehow the video, not available. I have had some issues with my camera phone and converting files into my computer to upload them into YouTube and it's happened before, it's happened once or twice before, but never with a full on video. So needless to say, I wasn't going to go ahead and channel him right away after. I needed to like kind of let it, let it, just let it sit for a bit because I was like, that was such a great conversation. So we're gonna invite him back and I'm sure he will be gracious enough to communicate and connect with us again and we'll ask him some questions and maybe uh, spark your interest and uh, inspire your spirit, okay? All right, so come on in, Mr. Hawking. I always wanna put an S in the end of your name. <laughs> I apologize for that. I'm not sure what I should call you. Um, you said you can call me Steven. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, and I'm gonna share with the viewers what you look like. Remember, I'm clairvoyant, so I see. So he looks youthful. He kind of reminds me of somebody from like the UK that you would see. Um, I'm kind of getting a little bit of like a early 90s vibe or something like that, kind of. Um, and youthful, young, like, how do I describe him? Like a button up um, dress shirt, a pair of uh, like brown pants and a belt and um, glasses, kind of big glasses. Maybe, maybe it's even earlier too. It could be like, it's the seventies. It might be the seventies. The, just the style it's, and then his hair is kind of longer and just straighter and um, he looks youthful, like young, like a college kid. That's kind of the vibe I get as this college kid. Um, okay. So that's a little bit different than the last time too, than the first time we met. It, it was a little, just a little bit different. He was standing up very specifically. And right now he's seated, but he's not sitting in a wheelchair. There's no wheelchair confinement, any kind of physical debil um, disability issues that I can see in the presentation of the afterlife spirit energy. And, but he's not standing and that's how he was in the first time. So why the seated position? He's like, he's like, I thought it would be more comfortable, more casual. Okay. Mm -hmm. I saw an interview with Bill Gates and that's what sparked my interest in maybe trying to connect with you again. Thank you again for coming through after, obviously, I'm sure you know, you understand why we're speaking again because I don't have that first channeling video. And there must be a reason, must be a purpose. So looking forward to reconnecting here. But I was watching a Bill Gates interview and he reminded me of you. He kind of looks like you to me, except his, except your hair is like not quite um, as, you know, his is a little bit more wavy and stuff and yours is, yours is um, more straight. And so it kind of reminded me of you. It has a similar vibe. Are you familiar um, with Bill Gates? Have you, have you met, did you meet? We worked on something together. Are you saying like we worked on a project or we worked on something together? There was something they worked on together. Um, I don't know if it's philanthropic, it's science, some kind of science type of a thing, but for humanity, like global uh, climate. Um, and okay, so now I'm remembering some stuff, you guys, from my first conversation with you. So, we talked about, you mentioned climate change in our first conversation. And I know that you're like a cosmologist, which is like the study of the origin of how 
the universe began and you guys, this is so clunky. I, I apologize. I feel so clunky because I don't know that I've ever rechanneled anybody. This is the first time I think I've done that. Like knowing I have all this, inf I have all this information in my head from our first conversation and I want to make sure it comes out in this conversation. So I'm trying to recount it, but at the same time, I want to hear what your new information is because clearly there's new information. So some of the key points that I can recall off the top of my head from our first conversation, that maybe I just should say that, share that with the viewers, is the climate, uh, passion for climate change and understanding of um, this, like there's a sense of urgency or this um, almost inevitability of the climate changing, of the weather patterns changing, of challenges that result in food, um, concerns with food distribution and things like that in the future, like many, could be many years in the future. And yet there's this feeling of sense of responsibility and the urgency that comes with the energy that you brought forward in the first conversation was about that we have to pay attention to this now. And I myself personally don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of um, any kind of political connections or ties with like the global warming, the community against global warming, or, um, you know, s those kinds of, like, I'm not in an environmentalist movement specifically per se. And so I, I, and I didn't know that I would, ex I, I, I didn't know that I would hear that kind of thing from you. And so that's kind of surprised me a little bit, just a little bit, but it does make sense, I guess. But, um, so that was one piece that came up in the first conversation. And thereafter, I'm trying to remember what else we spoke about. You said something about God, right? And there was a phrase like God particle in one of the conversation, one piece of the conversation. And we did a really good job, I think, of channeling. Like I was able to hold space and you were able to bring in information. And then I was able to just paraphrase or use as best I could some of the phrases, words you were using, even if I didn't understand what they were, which because some of them I didn't. And... Um, kind of share that through. So it would be great if I can kind of embody that and help channel in that regard too. I'm just trying to remember if there's anything else from the first conversation that it would be worthwhile for all you all to know. He cha He did change his, um, there's this thing about having a understanding of the, uh, I wanted to ask him about the afterlife. We talked about it and I can't recall that really much. I, I don't remember what he said or what he shared because it was kind of this like transmission kind of thing. And so I want to, I want to touch on that again, specifically asking about the afterlife, but the, do you believe in God question? Because during the research that you had, there was um, uh, some talk about that. And did you change your mind on like creation of the, the universe and that kind of a thing? So. And the answer was yes, a bit. And I also wanted to say too that you had a great sense of humor. I think, I just think it was um, kind of, it was funny because it's subtle humor, but I, you totally pick up on it. And I can tell that you have this great personality. And so, and I can hear you very clearly. You speak like just anybody else um, with an actual, with your voice and so. All right, I wanna show that. Okay, so, okay, that's done. All right, now let's pretend like we haven't talked. If I can try to do that. You guys, I just couldn't let this one go because he was so great to talk to, so great. All right, so let's begin again, again, again. Gosh, we're at like nine minutes here and I'm just kind of getting into the channel. All right, so he's like, I don't have any place to be. <laughs> He's like, I don't have any place to be. <laughs> Ooh, time. Let's talk about that. That's interesting. Let's talk about the concept of time. Uh, Stephen, can you explain to us, help us understand what time is, specifically from your perspective now and the afterlife? Yes, we can have this conversation. I think it would be more important for us to revisit the conversation, the, the points that we made previous, which were, you asked me where I was, what this was that I am, am in or speaking from or how it's possible that I'm able to speak to you. I think that would be a good place to start. Let's start at the beginning. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay, then. Thank you. 
oh my gosh, I'm so like, mm, my energy, I can feel the info and there's a lot and it kind of blew my mind the last time too. So I'm going to kind of try to make sure I'm grounded as I'm receiving this energy and information. Okay. I can hear a lot of vibrational changes. I can hear the energies attuning. So where are you? Where are you coming to us from? It's like um, the atmosphere. In the human mind, the concept of heaven is something that, that many people share. And it's not altogether inaccurate, but the concept of heaven is built from belief system and created to help, how does he say it, temper expectation and to calm fear, but also as a form of control. Oh, wow, that's right. You are a mega truth teller. You are a mega truth, he's a mega truth teller. He just says things very straight. And I respect that. I have a lot of respect for that. Mm -hmm. I, I knew you would, he said, I knew you would. So the afterlife, are you talking to me from the afterlife? Or let's just say it this way. Are you communicating from, an, from the afterlife? When you say the atmosphere, and are kind of joking about that. We're sort of like, it's, it's very true, we are sort of like the gaseousness that's around planets or that you would see or consider stardust in, in your terms, not in scientific terms, but in in what you might see as the, the collection of energy that is expelled from a planet or perhaps from, from two objects colliding in the universe. And then there's this sort of dust that happens. I could say, I guess you could say I'm sort of dust, stardust maybe. But that seems a little metaphysical for me. And for the scientist, <laughs> it is not about matter or mass. It's, it's, there's no such thing any longer when there's no body that's attached to this energy that is expelled from the body. Stardust, yeah, dust, gaseous, gaseous, kind of you guys, what I'm seeing is literally like this gaseous cloud around like some kind of a object, like a rock in space kind of thing. And that's what I see is this kind of dust and then there's light around it. That's what I see. That's literally what he's showing me and I can see that. He says, that's very accurate. <sighs> okay, so, so we're not matter or mass, you don't have a body, but yet you are communicating. How is that? Oh wait, um, I'm trying to think is, we talked about multiple dimensions and things too in the previous conversation. So we have to talk about the, let's talk about time and multiple dimensions too when we get a chance, to, let's not forget that. Um, so, you're kind of like stardust, blah, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> I'm so technical. Do you like it? All right. So, but where I can't do this. I just can't do this. I can't do a redo. I cannot do a redo. I cannot do a redo because I'm thinking about all the cool things he and I talked about and we're really, really wanting to share them with you. And I'm remembering things as we're connected and I can't, it doesn't feel authentic. We talked about time and how um, there's different dimensions of things, which are really basically kind of like levels or like steps, like on a staircase, different levels, but nothing's, not one is better than another at all. And that we have all this access to all these levels, places, or places, but there's really no place. There's no such thing as a place, just like there's no such thing as matter. And so even though he can speak to me from the afterlife and share with you afterlife information, it's really infused knowledge, which is really just energy. So I'm really just interpreting the energy, forming it into words that match, the energy matches with words in my brain as I'm speaking them out to you, which is how there's a voice to the afterlife guest, Stephen Hawking because I have a voice and that's, he's utilizing, he's able to utilize what I have available because I'm able to open up and connect energetically to what he is or is not. There's no form, there's formlessness. 
And so that stardust energy or that, like, I, I hope that doesn't sound disrespectful to anyone, especially if anybody's lost anybody recently. I, I super duper apologize if you're, you're super sad about that. And if this doesn't feel right to you, it's, it's, it's not really about the right or the wrong or this way or that way. It's really just about the concepts and the experience that this particular afterlife guide, this afterlife wisdom sharer is providing for us. It's a perspective based upon his former previous perspective of being in a body and having human experiences and understanding he understood at a, not just an intellectual level, but a really deeper intuitive level of the earth and, and not just the earth, but the earth is earth's place in the cosmos and how small it really was, but how much impact then individual people in, in their matter and mass had on life here on earth. So that's the deal. Okay. So that's how he's able to communicate and connect. So the psychic thing, how am I as a medium an in-between? So a medium is in between a small and a large, right? Medium is in between a bridge between the worlds, but there's not one, there's not two worlds with a little bridge in between. There's multiple steps of different ways to connect. And so another psychic intuitive medium or you just trying to connect, you might use different form like, writing, you might use different form like doing a, a meditation to connect. You might do, you might use a, um, s some sort of, of channeling that is different than how you're seeing it here. And, but there, there's not, there's not one choice or option because it's individual because we have individual experiences, our energy is based on vibration, based upon the accumulation of our individual experiences, based upon past lives and, and present lives as we project into the future, as we are that gaseous energy around the planet or around the rocky thing that I see, around the mass in the universe, is how he's showing, like he's, he's saying he's the gaseous star energy around, or starlight energy, right? Around that planet or that object. That object is representation. It's like a metaphor of the human body or the reincarnation coming back in. So we didn't talk about this before, but are you reincarnated? Oh boy, that's a big one. I literally heard yes, which surprises me. I heard yes, right away I heard yes. And so I want to, the, my mind as Bridget wants to interpret that as, oh, well maybe he's channeling to a scientist or channeling to somebody working through somebody that's here on earth and bringing information through that way. No, that's not what I said. He says, no, that's not what I said. Yes. And so he's reincarnated, which means you're born again into a body. Or he's saying, or potentially sharing a dual reality with somebody else, which is complicated, you guys. I don't know how I'm gonna share this. This is not layman's kind of just normal, natural stuff you talk about at the dinner table. This is stuff that like when you're deep into understanding spirit and working yourself maybe as a psychic or have been working with intuition for a long time and have had own, your own personal experience, this might be hard to understand. But there is this, he's referring to this concept of having um, sharing soul space where you maybe heard of terms like walk-ins or shared soul experience or where somebody comes in and shares the energy of the individual during that a part of their lifetime so they can have those experiences. And then sometimes the person that has those energy experiences or those experiences, those shared soul experiences will remember a past life as that person. This happens a lot, you guys, with really famous people like Marilyn Monroe, for example. Do you know how many people have e emailed me and said, I was her, I was her. I'm like, yeah, okay. The reason why you feel that strong, strong connection is it's possible that you had a shared soul experience with her. She embodied it. You shared the experience with her so you could benefit from it. It's totally possible, yes. So it's not like a one-to-one -one ratio, you guys. The soul is 
far more vast and complicated and beautiful and mysterious than we will ever know in our human body. And so the best way that we can learn about that stuff besides going to the afterlife and having to come back again, which then you kind of forget because you re-enter and then your human body and then your brain and you have to start all over again, is to ch channel or to use a mediumship connection like this. So let's, I'm gonna keep trying this, you guys. Let's keep going, okay? You guys gonna hang in there with me? You know, you guys know it's been a while since uh, Bridge has done some channeling, right? At least publicly for you guys. And this one could be, I mean, it's, it's tricky when you talk about anything to do with religion and things. It's, it's a little, it could be a little spicy for people, you know? So we're just here to talk legit real experience that I'm having, right? And sharing with you. Okay, wow, okay, that was big and profound. Thank you for sharing. Um, all right, so do you wanna hit the dot? Let's just hit the nail on the head and go right to the, the, big, <laughs> the big question about the God, okay, God. Talk to us about God. Help us understand what is God? I'm going to wait to see if I can get something to land that's unique to what I already know that he shared with me previously. Let's see if I can get something to land in. So I see orange. Orange is the color of the sacral chakra, which is creation, earth, energy, which is creation, creativity, drive, ambition, fire. Mm. Okay. Right away, he says pain. So is there a God? Explain to us what God is. Yes, it's your mind. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It, 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 did I hear that accurately? It, it is your mind or it's in your mind? Your mind thinks, perhaps. Your mind believes. Hmm. It is the director of your reality. And it's not. It's not. It's not a one-to-one -one sort of um, power struggle relationship. It's a broader, huh, it's a broader it's based upon actually a fear of extinction to outrun what you feel is going to cause you your downfall or failure. So from the minute that you are born, you are outrunning death because you know it is, it is coming and the time between then and now is a time of, from the mind, a uh, tremendous amount of pressure or stress to help you to live through as much as you possibly can to have as many experiences as you, as you can have and gather all that data, research information, which is sort of what you are doing during the lifetime you have been given. And then at the end, there is another transition. And it doesn't stop. Contrary to what you may believe, the circle or the cycle of life, it doesn't stop. It's not this, um, I've said this before, there's not this straight line, but he shows it as, he shows it as a continuous line, like an infinite line. Like life is like an infinite line and he's showing me all these numbers, infinite, 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 infinite. It just keeps going and it keeps going. The reason why we connect it to circular, the circular energy is to understand that it's more like, like the spiral shape with multiple circles, 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 circles. And the, the multiple circles aren't even connected one to another. They're just circle, 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 big circle, little circle, little circle, little circle. That kind of thing is what he's showing me. And he's saying that that represents the layers of energy that, that makes us up. That when we come in and we're born into a body, we bring that. It's like in our soul, it almost looks like a target kind of thing with like lots of layers though. And it's in our soul, our spirit. And again, it's it's not a spiral where it's connected like a line. It's multiple circle, 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 circle. And he says, You're, that is born in with you. And that is just a simple, what you would refer to as a pattern. Um, it is evidence and proof that 
you do have the wisdom and the knowledge beyond the expectation of the mind, which is limited by this, this, this concept of, of releasing your power to something different, ambiguous perhaps, or direct specific like a god, which is a person or, or viewed in the image of a human, or whether it be a, a feeling or a sentiment like uh, love or something like light that, that some may identify with. It is about understanding, it's, it's, in a way it is about transcending the mind so that the mind is God is that the mind is the servant of something greater and that its only job is to get you to the, the pinnacle or the point of completion of this, this line or this cycle, which is death. But it's to survive this. And so the mind sees life as living as a series of challenges. And, and it's almost like a game, trying to figure it out, the next move to make, that there is this way to cheat the system or this right way. And, and in some forms, the intellect, the human mind intellect, can cheat the system that was created naturally within us as the miraculous form of over the evolution of man, mankind, and from our animalistic traits in nature, there are ways to cheat the system and to trick our animalistic instincts or our primal instincts into not just being submissive, but harnessing the energy or the power of those animalistic or primal instincts and using them to help us not only move through the stages or the steps or the experiences of your life, but to help you be more successful, to, to, to turn up the, the, um, the adrenaline, which is another piece, this biochemical reaction that you actually have when you do something perceived as accurate, good, it's like the parental figure in your mind, uh, approving or in some cases, many cases, disapproving and how when other people talk down to you, that can be motivation to prove them wrong. And so through this, it's like a survival instinct or a natural primal instinct or a biochemical reaction response that's happening. And so in many ways, science, and including psychiatry and other studies of the brain or the body, et cetera, or of the environment of the universe, the cosmos, has noticed the mechanics of the parts and the pieces of what creates this sort of response and you can create it. You can make it happen or force it to happen. And that can be dangerous in some ways. Some of the science and the data has gone beyond, such as with artificial intelligence and some of the theories that have, have come around the artificial intelligence has been so supported of the promotion of to increase productivity, which is really connected to the primal instinct of, of man and the drive for success, which is the outcome of death. Let's remember that. That there is this survival of the, 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 the best and brightest kind of instinct. And you can see that, not just in things like AI that have been created or in uh, global warming or climate change and, and even, even, even with the innovations that have come to address those kinds of challenges and, and, and to earth like uh, pollution and environmental uh, toxins, he says toxins, he's really harsh you guys when it comes to environmental stuff. He is like poison in the air and exhaust of cars and manufacturing. I mean he's really harsh on it. He's like because there's no, he says, because there is no negotiation, you can see clearly the cause and the effect. You can see clearly. So there have been some innovations and improvements to, you know, green energy, et cetera. But even that comes from this need to compete and find something, make a breakthrough, leave this, like, be, leave your mark. Uh, and, and that comes from the mind, like the ego, not even the intellect, but the ego. And that comes from the parent or the God role of the need for approval. So the God in a religion or a faction of judges at the end of the life. So once you live 
and you end up at the death point, the goal is to keep you alive as long as you can so that you can have these opportunities to prove and to, to, to be able to then show at the end of the life, at the end of the experience, at the death, the time of death, how, how, how valuable you have been. And so too, then God, the parental figure, will give you approval, will praise you and not punish you or judge you or, or in any way. So there is so many parts to this that makes it complicated to understand. And then there's many ways that you cannot understand because I, I cannot convey it through you energetically, Bridget, is what he's showing me. So he's showing me those circles, 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 just concentric circles, not connected together, but in the solar plexus, and that that energy is born into us. So what do the circle levels of circles represent? Because I want to be like, are they dimensions? Are they levels of development? Are they cycles in our lives? What are they? They're all of those things. They're all of those things. They're evidence. Evidence for you to be able to step up to an opportunity to look at something from a different perspective or level. So it is all of those things. So if you think about it in terms of accessing knowledge or wisdom in a library, you could access, you go to that one particular an email address and you get to that one place in the library or the number of that book, et cetera, that resource, and you get to that one place, that is one of those circles. But it is one dot, a sliver of that one circle. Okay, so it's wisdom, layers of wisdom and knowledge. Does it have to do anything to do with past lives? Like, can you talk to us about past lives? It's not programmed in for, for humans to be able to access and know with certainty their past experiences as human. Now, it would make sense, wouldn't it, for you to have reference material, for you to be able to look back and learn in this life from what you learned that life and use that information knowledge. But you have to understand that it has been infused into the energy of that, I want to say grid, but he's showing me the circle, circle, circles. But it's not like a file or a book that you pull out and open into this chapter. And chapter seven, Bridget was a maiden in the United Kingdom. You know, it's not, it's not like that. That would mess with the mind so much that you would be off track and curious about historical things and places and you'd be so distracted by these other experiences as curious and interesting or fascinating as they might be. Are they really serving you here? And if they're not, the mind is going to ignore or cause you to feel badly about any memory that you might have about those past life experiences, which could actually help you. So instead of focusing on that information, whether it is past or by the way you can access future, very unusual to do that up to this point. However, right about 2000, he showed me 2002, 2003, 2004, something changed where you could access, now all of a sudden, instead of just past lives, people can go and sh connect with their future lives. But that is very problematic because of the, and what I see is like sacred geometry shapes, because of the, the ways in which you access this information, trying to bring it back in, it's energy. Once you access the information, you have access to that energy and you have it then, and it just goes kind of around you. And if you are already feeling, sensing, being intuitive and working with energy, you're adding extra energy in here. No wonder why it is confusing for you to make decisions, to decide on your career, to decide on a, a mate, to decide on a, 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 a change because there's extra energy from additional lives, additional reference points, not just from people in your life, but from your experiences. So you do not want your brain to derail or to, to start to compete with inside the soul, because then it is us against them. And then it's a constant struggle. You're constantly conflicted, never really happy or fulfilled, not being able to enjoy, smell the roses, so to speak. And that's not really the point, you might say. So God is 
individual, like how we create God to be like how I have seen it and like other experiences because I have, I have had multiple sessions, thousands of sessions of people that have different spiritual backgrounds and religious beliefs. Like God is different names. God is a goddess in some aspects. God might be um, energy of nature, earth, etc. Like there's so many different things. There's multiple deities or there's no deities or what have you. What about people who are like atheist or don't even believe in any of that? Then what? He says, you might, you might think, is that me? Was that me at one point? He's like, was that me at one point? I considered it something to prove or to see, to find out evidence, to explore. Is there God? Is there not God? And scientific, there's scientific proof that the way the universe has been created is just through natural scientific interactions and chain reactions. And yet, there is also a piece that is not explainable. There is a mystery. There is a great mystery. And in that mystery, that is God. And God is actually the collective believing in something greater that transcends your human life experience and that will then gather your energy upon releasement of the body to have a sense of belonging and a reconnection, a place to be. Not a physical place, but an ethereal place to be and to belong. And that's what you really want in your human life experience is the belonging. We all want that. So yes, I do believe there is higher intelligence. Yes, in the form of guidance, guides, saints, whatever you may um, worship, pray to, or communicate with, yes, I believe there is that. Okay, so you believe that now because you've hung out with them or you believe that because when you were a human you figured that out? I am gonna have to stop this video, I think, because I think it's gonna get too long and I won't be able to upload it on YouTube, you guys. Mm -mm, not gonna be able to do it. Mm -mm. He says, no, I didn't have experience with guides or intuitive experiences when I was a human. I had feelings and sensations and I felt peaceful. I felt love, I felt connected, but I didn't have one-on-one -on -one experiences, no, like your archangels, for example. But they, yes, they all exist, all of these things exist. Okay, you guys, I gotta wrap this one because I don't want to have problems with the upload. So this is Bridget, we've been talking to Stephen Hawking. I'll do another video, I'll just turn this one off and start another one and uh, maybe do a bonus one for some of my Facebook people or something like that, okay? So thank you so much for um, being here and hanging out with me and feeling through this clunky, chunky process with me today when we've had a conversation with Stephen Hawking and the afterlife. Thanks for being here at Above Life Channel. I hope we've inspired your spirit and filled you with some hope. We've certainly given you some stuff to think about. Thanks for being here. <laughs>